Well, let's talk about that Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia fight. It's coming up in a few days. A lot has been made uh, of this promotion and the back and forth that's been going on. Uh, but let's talk about what, what's going to transpire in the ring. How do you see this fight unfolding come April 20th? Well, the good thing about it, they fought six times as amateurs. They both are well for me with one another, right? That means that you probably won't get no early round stoppage. You probably won't get too much early round action. You get action, but it shouldn't be nothing that we don't expect. Uh, the longer the fight goes, the more we're going to figure out who has uh, um, who has grown as a professional and who has not. That's you know because professional boxing is different from amateur boxing. And when you start to find that out is when the rounds start to get longer, you find out who's developed and who has not developed as a professional. And that's what this fight is going to show us. Mm -hmm. Do you think Ryan has the skill sets to compete with Devin uh, at that high level? In, in, well, the, well I don't say, I don't, I don't say he had the skill set. What I'm going to say is that he knows him well enough. And if he competed, competed with him as an amateur, then I'm sure he's going to be able to get close to competing with him as a pro. It's just a matter of who can hold on the longest. And like I say, it, 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 the, the story will be, the storyline will be who has better developed as a professional. That's what the storyline will be. Mm -hmm. As a fighter yourself, if your opponent was being so unpredictable and enigmatic leading up to a fight, what do you make of that? I still go back and look at the last time he lost. And that's exactly what I go do to him. I don't care how he acting or how he looking. This is what I'm trying to do to him. But with Ryan, Ryan is smart because he's bringing a different mindset to the game. And he's making them think beyond that. They're thinking, wait a minute, what's going on with him? So they get their mind hopefully off of that last loss so that he can put some more uh, credit back on his side. You feel me? So I think he's going about it very smartly. And um, I think Haney's going about it smartly too. So we'll see whose who's scheme works, you know? What do you think Ryan needs to improve on in this fight with Derek James in order to give himself a, a legitimate chance? Well, um, what I think he needs to do is he got to use more weapons. You know, you can't just depend on the left hook because everybody knows about your left hook now. You feel me? So if it's just your left hook, that should not work because, like Tank said, all you got is left hook, you're not going to beat me. And he didn't. So once again, if Devin understand that, but like I say, he and Devin know each other better than he and Tank did, so you never can't tell, but I think he should have developed more tools. His right hand, his jab, his body shots, I think he should develop a few more weapons so that people ain't just looking for the left hook, they don't know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, Devin Haney has all the ingredients to be the mm -hmm. generational fighter that you were, that Floyd Mayweather was. Do you think there's anyone across these weight divisions that could beat Devin Haney right now? Who do you think is the one uh, that could give him the toughest test? I don't know who will beat him. I know Tank probably gave him the toughest test, but I don't think nobody necessarily going to beat him right now, but I, I think Tank will be the toughest test, and she could be a good test too, so you never know, but beating him, I don't know. He's on a pretty high high, 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 high ground right now. He's on pretty high ground right now, and it's going to be very difficult to beat him because his confidence is at an all-time high. I mean, you got to think about the kid was Undisputed champion at what twenty three years old? Right. You don't get no better than that. You understand how you gonna beat that? So this guy has loads of deserved confidence, and you gotta beat that before you can get to a skill. You understand me? So, as a legendary generational fighter, you know, not a lot of top athletes transition into being great coaches. But what makes you uh, so uh, passionate and uh, equipped to? be the a coach for uh these next generation of fighters. What what what's the what keeps you going in that department? Most athletes don't have the patience or the knowledge to be able to teach on different angles or on different levels. I have the patience and the knowledge to teach it to teach at every level. If you don't have patience, then you can't teach at every level. If you don't have knowledge or you you don't know how you got there, you can't teach at every level. The way I was taught, it'll be instilled in me forever. And I can teach it because the way that I teach it is the way that I learned it. Mm -hmm. Just hypothetically speaking, who do you think is the best trained fighter, just from your uh, observation? Who, when right you, now? When you watch their fights, be like, yeah, that, that's a well-coached fighter right there. Oh, Mr. Crawford. 
Mm -hmm. Obviously, his coach. David Haney. David Haney is well trained. David Haney is well trained. David Haney is well trained. Um, Devontae Davis is well trained. Dimitri Bivol is well trained. Uh, a lot of good fighters are well trained. Just you, know, you got you got Boots Ennis is well trained. A lot of guys that are well trained. Just you just got to see them and see them in different situations before you really figure it out. You know. Boy, I know it's going to be another great night of fights for you. Uh, you're doing so many things nowadays: training, promoting, uh, considering the right fights for the right time. But let's talk about this June 28 show really quickly. Andrew Murphy, uh, what have you guys been working on uh, in camp for this one? And uh, what are you looking forward to seeing from him? Just trying to get Andrew uh, sharpened back up, you know, getting back on track and um, been working on spending more energy on our output of punches and less energy on the the process of getting the punches there. He's a guy that, and I noticed as I went back and watched the last fight, he put, puts a lot more into the process than he does into the actual punch. So now I'm trying to eliminate that a little bit and save more energy for the actual punch than you than you rather than use it all up in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, how is uh, Andrew different from all the other fighters you're training? I know you're in London, well, you know, uh, fresh off another big win from from a fighter yeah. in your stable. But how is Andrew yeah. different from the rest of the guys? The the biggest difference about Andrew is that he's very heavy handed. You know, very handed, heavy handed for his weight class. And he, he learns, he catches on pretty quickly. So being that he's agile, he's got a lot of rhythm, catch on quick and heavy handed, he's always he always presents a problem for the opposition because he can hit you and not even be trying to hit you hard, but still feel thunderous because of his heavy hand. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking to also see him uh, develop more? I, I know he's fluctuating in between weights right now going up from super middleweight to light heavyweight, but uh, what are you looking forward to seeing more moving forward? Now, he's standing at super middleweight. Super middleweight is his weight class, and uh, that's what he'll be for the, for the, for the, for the long haul, I think, and uh, I don't see him being much bigger than that till he probably be young, 27 years old, so for the next three or five years, he'll be super middleweight. Um, I like him at that weight class. He's got to put, like I said, put a little more thump on his punches, uh, be able to put a few more punches together, and he'll be okay. Defensively, is the biggest thing for him. Mm -hmm. Have you had any conversations with Devin Haney and and or Bill Haney and what they see in Andrew uh, to sign him to? I really, no, I really haven't spoke to him much. He, you know, he went out there with him and talked to him himself. That was something I think that he should do as a fighter, not me, because um, he's the fighter. He knows what he wants, and uh, he should speak to him himself because you know sometimes when trainers get involved, people think trainers go in looking for themselves, and it's not about me. It's about Andrew. So I want Andrew to go do it himself so that he makes sure he gets the best of what he wants. And we go from there. Another fighter in your stable will be on that show, Mandi Jangra. Uh, uh, what's been the best part of overseeing his development? The best part of overseeing Mandi's development is the fact that Mandi's going to try every, any and everything that you teach him in the gym. If I show him something in the gym, the next time I see him in the ring, he's going to definitely try it. So you, you like a guy with that kind of tenacity. He's also a little bit older. You know, he's 32 years old, so he understands that the clock is ticking. He don't have time to waste like like Andrew and some of the others do because age is not on the side. So he goes out and he tries every little detail you show him in the gym, he's going to try it and fight. And I love that. People say, why you always laugh when Mandy's fighting? I said, because I understand what he's thinking before he does it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Andrew and Mandeep are just two of the several fighters that you're training right now. Uh, can yep. you bring us up to speed on who the active roster looks like? Well, I got uh, Red Run Kaya from Sweden. I got Shady Gamora from Sweden. I got James Wilkin, who just won up in Sheffield, England, uh, Saturday night. Uh, I got Kevin Newman, who's fighting on the Devin Haney undercard. Um, got Andrew Mandy. Um, um, got a kid named Dominique that you wouldn't know, but he's young and upcoming, 122 pounder. Uh, um, got Tony Curtis over here in the UK. Got um, uh, Archie Sharp over here in the UK. And uh, somebody else, I'm missing somebody. Oh, I got Akon Kerwai still. Um, I think that's about it, yeah. 